All right, so what kind of problems um, can we expect to see with moles or Avogadro's number? So the first problem is one that I find is one of the easiest, but a lot of students miss this one. If I have 10 moles of potassium chlorate, how many moles of oxygen? do I have for some reason this throws a lot of students but it and, and some of you probably saying this is really easy so think about what the answer is if you have 10 moles of potassium perchlorate for every one mole of potassium perchlorate or per chlorate, not perchlorate, just chlorate, uh, you have three moles of oxygen. Three moles of O. And you go, how'd you get that? Well, for every one of these, I have three of those. So my answer would be 30 moles of oxygen, just O. All right? Problem number two, I have 3.2 times 10 to the 23rd uh, atoms of uh, sulfur and I'd like to know uh, how many grams of sulfur do I have all right so for this problem uh, you first have to know some equalities one is one mole of anything in this case, one mole of sulfur means I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uh, atoms of sulfur. Avogadro's number of sulfur atoms. The other thing that you need to know to do this problem is that how much does one mole of sulfur weigh? One mole of sulfur weighs 32.0. Seven grams. All right, so we we start with what's given, three point two times ten to the twenty third atoms of sulfur. And it's important when you're doing these calculations, don't just write the number, write the units as well, or what's it up? Because if you don't, you get confused and you'll make the, a mistake here. All right, we need to get rid of the atoms of sulfur. And we need to convert that to moles. Because once I get moles of sulfur, then I know that one mole of sulfur weighs 32.07 grams. That's the molar mass of sulfur. That's what we talked about in the previous lesson. Uh, grams per mole is molar mass. So we're going to be using molar mass a lot throughout the rest of the uh, semester. All right, so uh, we need atoms in the denominator, moles in the numerator. We do just like we did on the conversion uh, problems uh, previously. We need to divide both sides of our equality by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Atoms of sulfur. Atoms of sulfur over here. This cancels out. This is 1, or it becomes unity. That's what the mathematicians would say. It becomes 1. That tells me this is a true conversion factor, and that's the conversion factor I need here. One mole of sulfur is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. So again, if you learned the mathematics in chapters 1 and 2, we're doing the same math throughout the rest of 140. And this also works for 150. It also works for physics. But take the time to develop the entire problem out. Now that we can see the atoms of uh, sulfur cancel out, the moles of sulfur cancel out, and all we have to do on the calculator is say 3.2 EE on your calculator, that's the exponential key, 23 hit the division key and divide that by 6.022 EE23 and then multiply by 32.07 grams and that will give us our answer here. Unfortunately I don't have my calculator with me. 
so I'm not going to be able to um, show you what the answer is, but let's see, is there a, um, let's see, 0.5, something like 16 grams, it looks like, something like 16, maybe a little, uh, a little bit more than 16, all right? Let's go on to the next type of problem. The next problem is someone says I have uh, 39.7 grams of aluminum and they would like to know how many atoms of aluminum do I have. All right. So for this one, we need to know how much one mole of aluminum weighs. One mole of aluminum weighs according to the periodic table. Um, 26.98 grams. And the other thing we need is we need to know that one mole of anything, in this case one mole of aluminum, is equal to Avogadro's number of aluminum atoms. All right. So we get, we take what's given, 39.7 grams of aluminum, Multiplication bar, quotient bar. We want to get gr rid of the grams of aluminum, and we want to end up with uh, moles of aluminum. And you go, why not atoms here? Well, we don't know the relationship between grams and moles. We know the relationship between um, moles and grams. Uh, and then once we get the moles, we can determine the relationship between moles and atoms. So uh, we take the first equality and we divide both sides by 26.98 grams. This side becomes 1. That tells me that's a true conversion factor. 1 mole over aluminum, uh, 1 mole of aluminum over 26.98 grams. Again, why this is so important that I say this because this tells us this is a true conversion factor. Remember this in math, 7 times 1 is 7. One's called an identity because it doesn't really change the amount that we have. It's still 7. Well, the same thing is here. We have 39.7 grams of aluminum. All we're doing here is changing the units from grams to moles. We still have 39.7 grams of aluminum because this is just an identity. It's a conversion factor. All right. Next conversion factor. Well, we want to get rid of the moles of aluminum, and we want to end up with atoms of aluminum. And so we look at our equality up here. We need to divide by both sides by one mole of aluminum. You go, how do you know to do that? Well, that's what I want in the denominator here. And I want 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd in the numerator. All right. So this side becomes 1. There's my conversion factor. That's what I place in here. We know we've set it up right because the grams of aluminum cancel out or become one. Moles of aluminum become one, and I'm left with units of atoms of aluminum. So, let's see. I don't know. 1.5. Hmm. Maybe 9 times 10 to the 23rd. I'm just guessing here. I don't have my calculator. I should I should get one, but uh, I don't have it with me here. So 9 times 10 to the 23rd uh, atoms of aluminum, something like that, somewhere approximately. You can actually calculate that out. All right. I hope that helps. These are the calculations that you generally see with molar mass, and uh, we'll continue on in our next lecture.